Ah, the horror of growing old. To feel the hand of time laid upon one's body. To watch the skin wrinkling. To awake and fear the morning light. And to know that one is no longer desirable. Life without beauty would be worthless to me. Empress Sisi. We're delving into the obsessive beauty rituals of Empress Sisi. Are you ready? Welcome to a brand new episode of Beauty Unlocked, the podcast. If you're new to Beauty Unlocked, I'm Carissa, host of this circus. Welcome, friends. If you've been a long-time listener, you know all about the shenanigans and utter fuckery that is Beauty Unlocked. <laughs> Are you ready? Welcome, friends, to a brand new episode of Beauty Unlocked. If you're new here, I'm Carissa, and today we're delving into the world of Empress Elizabeth of Austria, commonly known as Empress Sisi. So born on December 24th, 1837 in Munich, she became Empress of Austria and Queen of Hungary from her marriage to Emperor Franz Joseph I at just 16 years old. While she is widely remembered as one of the most beautiful women of 19th century Europe, her journey to maintain her looks was far from glamorous. So let's uncover the truth behind her beauty rituals. Empress Sisi's pursuit of beauty started in her youth, where she was not initially considered a great beauty. Some biographers even referred to her as having a round peasant face. I'm not too sure what that means, but okay. Highly sensitive to any perceived deficiencies in her appearance, Cece embarked on a lifetime of extreme beauty rituals that have since become the stuff of legend. One of Cece's most recognizable attributes was her thick chestnut hair, which reached all the way down to her feet. However, maintaining this magnificent hair required a significant time commitment of no less than three hours per day. Every morning, she underwent a rigorous routine that included a cold bath, massage, light breakfast, and intense exercise before sitting down for the lengthy ministrations of her hairdresser, Fanny Faifalik. I'm so sorry if I said your last name wrong, Fanny. This might shock you, but the sheer weight of Cece's hair was sometimes too much for her. She occasionally suffered from headaches and, at their onset, would remain in her apartments with her hair held up with ribbons to take the weight from her head and allow the air to circulate until the headache passed. Every three weeks, her hair had to be washed and dried. This was a time-consuming process in itself. In Ludwig Merkel's biography of C.C., he writes, Every three weeks, it was washed with raw eggs and brandy, a procedure which took an entire day, including drying. After washing her hair, the empress would don a long, waterproof silk dressing gown and walk up and down until her hair dried. To preserve her slender figure, Cece followed strict diets and engaged in hours of exercise. She often spent up to 10 hours walking, disregarding protests from her attendants. Horse riding and gymnastics were also part of her fitness regimen, and she installed a gymnastic room at her palace. Throughout her life, she was fanatical about maintaining a slim figure. To this end, she wrapped herself in damp clothes above the hips to reduce inches and was constantly, and often unhealthily, dieting. Breakfast was usually quite minimal, and some evening meals consisted of little more than a thin gravy. In Ludwig Merkel's biography, he writes, she would partake only of pressed extract of raw chicken, partridge, venison, and beef. For weeks on end, she would eat nothing but eggs, oranges, and raw milk. Additionally, she regularly purchased laxatives from the court pharmacy. During that era, eating disorders were not a recognized condition, 
but it is highly likely that Cece and so many others suffered from an eating disorder. These stringent measures had an effect on her weight, as Empress Cece never exceeded 50 kilos in weight, except during her pregnancies, which I'm actually surprised she was able to carry babies full term, but that's a story for another time. And at times, her weight dropped to as low as 43.5 kilos. To emphasize her slender waist, Cece wore a corset and her dresses were meticulously tailored to fit her body, ensuring that no bumps or creases of clasps and buttons were visible. Estimates regarding her waist size vary between 47 to 55 inches. In all images known of her, we can see the slenderness of her waist. Cece's skincare rituals were no less extreme, with her obsession to keep wrinkles at bay. She tried various lotions and concoctions, including raw veal masks and creams made from unusual ingredients like lard, marshmallow roots, and ground slugs. Her dedication to her skincare was such that some creams required up to 12 hours of preparation. Despite her passion for skincare, Cece chose to shun makeup, believing that it interfered with nature's work. She emphasized the beauty of natural appearance and even criticized other women for wearing makeup, citing their artificiality. Mm, mm, mm. As Cece aged, she grappled with the fear of growing old and losing her desirability. She avoided being photographed past the age of 40 and often hid behind fans, umbrellas, and gloves. However, photographers still managed to capture glimpses of her, revealing her vulnerability. On September 10, 1898, Empress Elizabeth's life came to a sudden and violent end in a tragic incident in Geneva, Switzerland, my home for eight and a half years of my life. She was walking to the landing stage of a streamer ship, an Italian anarchist assassinated her by stabbing her through the heart. Now, Sisi was one of the 19th century's famous tight lacers, with a corset cinched to a mere 19.5 inches for the majority of her life. After being stabbed, she fell to the ground, but amazingly was able to stand again and walk all the way to the landing bridge of the ship before becoming weak and ultimately fainting. She was carried to her cabin, where her companions noticed a small spot of blood on her bodice. When Cece failed to regain consciousness, she was carried off the ship to a nearby hotel where she died upon arrival. It was at the hotel that her companions realized that she had been stabbed. Later, doctors would marvel that a woman who had been assaulted with a weapon that broke her fourth rib, pierced her lungs and pericardium, and penetrated her heart from top to bottom, finally coming out from the lower part of the left ventricle, could have risen from where she fell and walked all the way to the streamer ship. The question is, did her incredibly tight corset prevent her from bleeding to death at the scene? Many certainly think so. It is crucial to view Empress Cece's beauty rituals with a critical lens and acknowledge the potential harm such extreme practices can cause. Her story serves as a cautionary tale of the pressure society places on individuals, especially women, to adhere to unrealistic beauty standards. I want to close this episode with a quote from Mary Wollstonecraft's A Vindication of the Rights of Woman, 1792. Taught from their infancy that beauty is woman's scepter, the mind shapes itself to the body, and, roaming round its gilt cage, only seeks to adorn its prison. Thank you for joining us on this thought-provoking journey into the world of Empress Cece's beauty rituals. My friends, I just want to say that let's celebrate individuality and embrace the uniqueness that each one of us brings to this world. I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to give us a follow throughout social media and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The link is in the show notes. Stay hydrated, my loves. Wear that SPF. Be safe. And you will hear from me again next week. Bye. Make it clap, 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 clap. Make it clap, 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 clap.
Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it clap, clap, clap. Make it cl